Okay. Hey, here we go. Uh, this is the <clears throat> this is the English meeting call. I'm Dave Skanda, and welcome, welcome. We do this call most Saturdays at nine a.m. Pacific time. That's you right now. That is UTC minus eight, and uh, we talk about many things, but we focus on speaking skills using. English to speak. So anything, anything having to do with speaking. So that includes what? That includes pronunciation uh, and all the things associated with pronunciation, like rhythm, intonation, stress, uh, um, mouth position, how to change the way you move your mouth, which means changing habits and you know, changing the way uh, you think about things because we get very comfortable doing things in our uh, native tongue, in our mother language. And when we speak a second language, we have to, we have to change that up a bit. Um, so what I do is I will listen to you and try to take some notes and give you some tips. But also what I really like is if you have questions. So if you have questions with anything related to speaking, which, by the way, also includes vocabulary, phrasing, slang, idioms, any type of um, interesting phrasing that you might have heard or that you have questions about, maybe the meaning of something. What does this mean? How do people use it? Those are great questions, and they tend to stick more in your brain when you ask them to me here and then we discuss it and then we give some examples and try to use it a bit and uh, that whole process usually um, makes it stick in your brain longer as opposed to just um, uh, looking it up in a like a dictionary or online source and then um, trying to remember it okay this guy's trying to get in let's try to bring him in I think we got that. And okay, so let's just go over uh, a few things and we'll get started. One of the things is um, please be aware of your background noise. And um, let's see, whoa, what's going on here? Uh, because sometimes we hear things that are going on on your line and you're not aware of it. So, what is very good is if you mute your microphone when you are not speaking, okay? So all you have to do is hover your cursor under everybody's name and picture, and you'll see the little microphone icon. It's a picture of a microphone, and you click on it, and it will mute or turn off your microphone. Okay, so that makes the call clear for everybody. And when you want to speak, just click it again, and then we can then we can uh, hear you, and it works out really good. So, um, Adolfo, I think we need you to please mute or turn off your microphone by clicking on that microphone picture under everybody's name and picture. You'll see a picture of a phone and a plus sign and a few other icons there. All right. So, um, so Adolf, Adolfo, does that make sense? Do you know how to turn off your microphone? Yeah. Okay. So just click on that little picture of the, um, of the microphone in Skype and that will turn it off. And then if you want to speak, just click it again. Just a minute, please. Okay, sure, sure. And there's, we're going to bring in a few more folks. Yeah. If you hover your cursor under everybody's name and picture in your Skype window, you'll see at the bottom, you'll see a picture of a little microphone next to a plus sign. And uh, that, will, that will turn it off. That's I will try again. Yeah, I don't, you, I don't know what cell phone. Oh, are you on a cell phone? Yeah. Because it might be a little different interface on a cell phone. So, um, so great. 
Yeah. If, if not, just try to keep it uh, quiet on your end because we I can hear a little background noise, but it's not too bad. So it's 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 okay. Yeah, I know we've had some people uh, call in on tablets and cell phones, and I do know that the interface is different. So um, sometimes it can be a little confusing as to how to mute. You you probably could just mute your cell phone. Um, speak uh microphone and that might do it as well uh let's see here i'm also let's see i'm trying to get this google uh thing here let me still do this background and uh, no auto adjustment i have more of me there we go okay all right well uh let's uh Oh, is somebody else trying to get in? Yeah, okay. So let's get started. Um, there, there are no rules on the show. The only rule that I have is everyone to please be respectful of everybody on the call. That's the only rule. Okay, so um, uh, let's see. Um, we have a few new people on, and I just want to Say hello to uh, Julio. How you doing, Julio? Hello, Julio. Julio. Uh, hello. Yeah. I'm here, Dave. Hey, how's it going? Now, Julio is calling from the country of Venezuela. And, uh, yes. yes, Minnesota. Minnesota? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Minnesota, Venezuela? <laughs> I, I wasn't no. aware of that. That's a joke. <laughs> mm. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. And uh, good to hear your voice. Glad you could be here today. Uh, Julio has been teaching English for a very long time. And um, he comes from um, a different country. He comes from the, the great country of Colombia. Yes. And um, Colombia. And we have a few other Colombians on the call as well. And it's interesting, uh, when I think of Colombia, um, like when you're from America. Um, oh, there's Bezo. Let's get him in. Uh, uh, we, we have the... Oh, uh, yeah. What's that, Julio? No, I have a friend from Argentina, and she would like to be in the call, too. Ah, okay. Well, yes, yeah, sure. Just ask her to send me a, uh, a request to exchange contact, and then I'll add her right in. Just I, I tried to add her, but I couldn't. Yeah, um, you could you could either give me her Skype name in the chat, or um, could, okay, well, I give oh, there it is. I see. I see. You already did. Sometimes I get. You know, I'm looking at like three things at once, and I didn't even see that. So let me see if I can get this person in. Let me see if I can search. And yeah, her name is Erica. Erica. Yeah, Eric. Okay. She's from Argentina. Okay, so add to contacts. Okay, so now I'm sending her a contact request. Thank uh, you, Dave. And then uh, maybe if she accepts it, then I can add her in. Um, yes. And uh, okay, so um, what was I saying? Oh, yeah, Columbia. We have the District of Columbia, Washington, D.C. And uh, that was named after. Columbus. Columbus, who discovered America, and we spell it differently. So, like Colombia is spelled, the country of Colombia is, is spelled C O L O M B I A. But we spell uh, like District of District of Columbia. We spell it uh, different. And then we have Columbia University. So, um, if if you folks from Columbia get us. Uh, uh, gringos like writing to you we may spell your country name wrong because we th we think of you know when we think like columbia university and you know these sorts of things we spell it differently so we think yeah. and yes. some people get pissed when they, they see that yeah right do you, do you like people from columbia get pissed right it's called right i don't get angry because uh no but well, people have to to learn how to pronounce the name it's not the same no well it's not really to pronounce but to to spell the name 
No, to pronounce, they pronounce uh, uh, in the same way. Like Columbia. It's not Columbia. I'm, I'm angry <laughs> when people... Oh, yeah. Well, I think, I think um, what, what Julio is saying is that uh, a lot of folks in the, in, uh, in the States or Canada or something, the, they will pronounce it correctly, but they will spell it wrong. Col because, you know, whether it's spelled with a U or an O, most of us say it Columbia. Yeah, uh -huh. the sound is yeah, yeah. It's just we spell it wrong. Um, uh, that's, that is understandable. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, it, it, it's just no, our it's I our no. well, well, because uh, because English is like that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, well, you know, many no, people. They, you know, I I've seen. I'm um, sorry. The way they spell Caracas. This is the way they spell Caracas. I know, but it's different. Yeah, but you know, it's the sound. You know, you, you you got to understand that English is it's a different language than Spanish. Yeah. Yes, I know that, but Caracas is not. A, it doesn't exist another name like Caracas, like Colombia and Colombia in, in, in the United States. No, but but to you it sounds Colombia, but to an English-speaking person is Colombia. Mm -hmm. No, anyway. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> well, things are getting heated. Already on the English meeting call, woo! <laughs> Ooh, <yeah. laughs> it's a heavy. We start off with a heavy debate right away. <laughs> I, I, I respect. I respect uh, what you said, Holy, but I'm, I don't agree. <laughs> okay. That's right. We don't. We don't all have to. We, we, yes. You beg to differ. We agree uh, to disagree. <laughs> yeah, we agree to disagree. <laughs> Uh, well, my friend is here, Erica. She's from Argentina. I don't know if she wants to introduce herself with your. Let's uh, see. Where is she? Is she? Respect. Is she in the call? Yeah, yeah she's in the call. Well, I don't see her in the call. I don't see her in the call. Julio. Maybe when she heard her name, she she ran she, away. She ran away. Um, <laughs> Because I'm still I trying to add her, and it comes. I don't think she exchanged. I don't see her as green, you know, like um, like uh, available, and um, I don't see her in my list. So, so she needs to accept my request. She's right, right now she's. I think she's writing because I just saw her name. Oh, hmm. I didn't know. What you're seeing and what I'm seeing are different because she might be connected. Oh, there she is. Oh, there she is now. Hello, Erica. How are you? Welcome, welcome. Sorry, I'm hopeless with technology. <laughs> hopeless with technology. Well, aren't we all in some way or another? I know it gets very frustrating. Um, uh, um, Aldolfo, we're still getting some feedback noise here. Yeah, it's Aldolfo. I just had to hang up on him because um, he's calling on his cell phone and it's hard for him to uh, uh, mute his microphone, I think. So um, that's why. But anyway, Erica, could you just say hello to everybody and tell us where you're from, please? Yes, I'm from Argentina. My name is Erica, and uh, I'm a teacher of English. Oh, you are fantastic! Wow, God, we got uh, a few teachers on the call today, which is excellent. And um, uh, it's nice to meet you, and I'm glad you could join us. Um, as you know, Julio's a teacher, and I think Jesus is uh, doing some teaching as well. And yes. um, and uh, sometimes I do a little teaching too. So. I'm a teacher as well. Uh, and uh, Well, Dave, I think you're a teacher by design. <laughs> teacher by design. Um, well, how does it, what does that mean? By birth? Is that what you mean? I think by, by, your, well, by your education. I mean, because your education shaped you. I mean, you have a linguistics degree after all, right? Isn't that right? I do indeed. I do. And, um, Dave, I have... Yes, go ahead. I have listened so... I have listened so many recorded audio clips of yours in YouTube. Oh. I feel so happy after listening to your all audio clip. Yeah, oh, you do very you. well. Oh, Thanks thank you. Oh, thank you. And um, could you just, um, uh, that's just so nice of you. Could you introduce yourself and tell us where you're from? I am from India. I am living in Delhi. My name is Sunita Oberoi. Ah. And I'm also a science teacher. 
You're also a what teacher? Science. I'm As, teaching science subject for higher secondary level. Oh, excellent. Excellent. Oh, Very so nice to hear that. Thank um, you. Well, welcome, Sunita from Delhi. Very nice. Very cool. <laughs> and um, yes, indeed. And then uh, let's see. Um, Allah is here. And um, I'm not sure uh, where you're from. Yeah, yeah. Hi there, Allah. Can you tell us? Uh, um, I'm not sure if that's your real name. If you want to tell us. Um, uh, would you like to be called and yeah, yeah, actually, where you're yeah, actually, uh, my name is Hamza Hamza okay nice to meet yeah, you where are you from Hamza I'm from Jordan Jordan cool all right Jordan ha has been in the news lately um, uh, so uh, if, if we've been paying attention to the international news we've been hearing about some things going on there but I oh, hope you're doing well thank you for joining us Hamza and all of you I want you yeah, thank you. And I just want to start off by saying, if anybody has any questions, you, you to please ask me. I would um, I'd be happy to answer. And I know sometimes people get a little shy to ask a question, but you can ask in two ways. You can type it in the chat room, and I can see your question, and then I can try to help you out there. And, uh, and then you can ask me just by speaking, okay? Uh, so anything having to do with English speaking, as I mentioned before, and that also includes uh, words, phrases, things like that. You can also ask me philosophical questions like what is the meaning of life? And I'll try to do my best. You know, I'll just try. <laughs> anything under the sun goes. <laughs> anything under the sun, which is a nice idiomatic phrase. So what does that mean? Hey, Zeus, anything under the sun? It basically means that everything, everything that um, exists, you know, everything. Like when I say, for instance, I'll, I'll give you another example. <coughs> sure. Say of a person, hey, he's tried every diet under the sun, so he's tried every diet out there that exists. That's possible. So that's basically what it means. Right. It means yeah. In in a very basic sense, it means everything. Yeah. 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 I mean, simply put, <laughs> and uh, and I'm actually learning a lesson in um, in talking less and letting the students talk more. <laughs> I got an interesting story to tell about that. Oh, okay, okay. Well, uh, but not right now. Yeah, hold on to that story, yeah. and um, uh, and uh, we will we will get into that. I'm just trying to look at the chat room and see. Oh, that's so nice. People are introducing themselves, which is great. And, um, oh, Wasim is here from Pakistan. Welcome, Wasim. So glad you could join us. And, um, oh, Hamza, you're an, you're an English teacher. Um, that's, yeah, I'm an English teacher. Ah, hello. So, so that's very interesting. And then who is that who just said hello? Hi, Dave. Oh, this there you are. Wasim. Hi, Wasim. How are you? I am pretty good. How about you? Ah, excellent, excellent. Wow, you know, you sound so clear and good. You sound your line. You don't sound like you're far away at all. You sound like you're sitting right next to me, Wasim. Right. Okay. It's a long time no see. I know. I know. But I remember your name and your picture, and uh, I'm like, oh. Cool. I'm so glad he joined us today. Mm, I'm glad to meet you too again. Um, uh, teacher, I would like to ask you one question about the connected speech in English. Okay, yeah, go ahead. Okay, for example, we say that meet you uh, in connected speech it sounds more like meet you, the ch sound. Right, right. Nice to meet you. Or we can say, did you, did you have a great day like this? Right, right. Um, yeah, w we say that, yeah, um, meet you when the T sound occurs at the end of one word, and the other word is, uh, I mean, commence on with the Y sound. These two are combined together with the CH sound. So what secret lies in it 
what it sounds, what it compels to sound like ch when these two uh, combination of these letters come across each other. Um, the secret, well, I'm writing some things and Julio wrote something. Um, and so just I'm writing, or uh, we're going to look at a few phonetic things in the chat room. And uh, like what Julio wrote was like meet, M-E-E-T-C-H-A, Micha. So you can pronounce some, people pronounce these a few different ways. So what Wasim is bringing up is very good because in North American English, um, people don't usually say, I would like to meet you. I, some do, some do, but in a casual speak, if I'm talking with friends or I'm talking uh, casually, I'm going to um, reduce it a bit and uh, put two, two words together, which sound differently. So what happens is, you know, maybe the way you're taught it is different than the way people speak it. So the thing is, um, I may say, hey, I'm going to meet you later today, Wasim. I'll see you there. Um, or I can say, I'm going to meet, meet you at the bus stop. Um, I'm going to meet you at the classroom. Meet you. Um, so the way I'm pronouncing it right now, phonetically, is like the sec is the one I put in, which is like M E E C H U. Me chew. I'm not hitting that T because I'm condensing my language. I'm reducing the language, and um, that's the way people speak. So. Um, yeah, I'd like to meet you at the coffee shop. Um, that's the way, uh, and I can also say like Julio wrote in, meet ya. Yeah, I'm going to meet ya at the coffee shop. So in a casual sense, that's the way people talk. Now you did, you were asking a specific question. Um, uh, what, what was your question about that? I forgot. Yeah, my question is, what secret lies in between this? That what makes it, I mean, what compels it to sound like ch? What compels it to sound like ch? Sound? Yeah, oh, I like see. Like we say, that, uh, the articulation may know, et cetera. So I'm talking right. about that, if there lies any secret about that. Well, um, the thing is, uh, okay, so like I'm going, if I said it, like the two different words and I articulate those sounds, I'm going to meet you um now i would say it like that in a more formal situation but the thing is um it's how it's does that comfortable, isn't it? uh about being comfortable uh, yeah i see your uh your uh what you wrote there in the chat room and um it is more comfortable but it's also um what happens is it's a it's a phenomenon of most languages, and that is um, when we speak, we we kind of uh, combine things uh, and we change the language a bit. Now, now, if we're like British, we'd say, oh, well, Seam, I'm going to meet you down at the coffee shop, you know, and they'll probably, they have more of a glottal stop in their language and the, the enunciation mm -hmm. is a bit different in British English. But in North American English, we tend to put things together, um, like Erica is saying, maybe more comfortable or um, just, you know. Uh, just relax. Just, yeah, more of a, thank you, Julio, more of a relaxed speech. And that's the way people tend to use the language in a casual way in North American English. So th the language changes. And um, that's why when you study a second language, um, uh, you'll, you, you often find there's a formal way to speak and then there's the casual way to speak. And I often tell like my story of, um, of uh, studying Mandarin in Taiwan. And I was very, well, I was a bit frustrated and a bit disappointed because they only taught it in the formal way. But when you go on the street 
and you talk to people, they're talk, they're speaking in the language t much differently, much differently. So this is the same phenomenon is like people really speak and they'll say, Hey, Wasim, I want to meet you at the coffee shop. And that's the real way people speak in a casual way. And I'm really glad you brought that up because that is real language. That is real speaking. And that's what I'm most interested in when I connect with people around the world is, hey, this is the way people really use the language. Um, so I want to make you aware of it. Just like, did you? You know, did did you see the movie last night? It's did ya, did ya. Those are two words. Did, you know, if I was British, maybe I would say, did you? see that movie you know um and i would i would pronounce those words separately more separately um but um, oh uh, vj you gotta mute your microphone there you go thank you hey cool to see you vj um <laughs> long time no see <laughs> your face at least um so yeah so uh that's the way um that's the way that people speak because okay. you know like Erica is saying that more relaxed but the other thing I wanted to point out about this is the language changes and language takes on new and different things and since maybe I could say that since English is a, a, an illogical language it's not like Spanish which is a much more logical language that things tend to morph a little differently because of that um, and uh, we do relax things we do condense things we do reduce things but it's a very good question does that pose like what as you what seem learning does that um, does that make it more difficult for you when you when you hear things like this or is it is it easy for you to understand no, it's it's very easy for me. It just means I want to increase my knowledge about this. Yeah, that's yeah. why. Yeah, I want to increase my knowledge about this. So, uh, for example, I've got another question about assimilation. Okay. Uh, assimilating two letters together. Um, like as in the word we say ten books, but in no fast English uh, we means often here ten books. The N before M B or P sounds more like M. So ten books becomes ten books, or the T coming before M B or P sounds more like G sound. So cigarette paper becomes cigarette paper. So again, the question arises: What it makes sounds? Uh, I mean, so the same as the the first part of the preceding word. Yeah. Okay. Right. These these are. Um, very unique uh, little phrases you have. Um, uh, cigarette paper. Um, uh, interesting for people who roll their own cigarettes or something in 10 books. Okay, so what happens is, like, let me use the, the phrase like, oh, I have 10 books. Now, if I break it up, you know, the, the word 10 has that N sound, right? And I release on the end I'll say 10 and my tongue go when I pronounce that n my tongue goes up touches the alveolar ridge which is the bumpy part of your the roof of your mouth behind your teeth the alveolar ridge and then I release it n 10 but if I'm if I have a word after it I'm going to connect it so but I don't make it M. That's, that's actually uh, um, a little incorrect there. What I do is I do not release it. Ten and I go right into the B. So I go up with my tongue to the end. Ten and then I come down with my lips without releasing my tongue. Ten and then I release on the B. Books. Ten books. Ten but so it sounds like M because it's a nasal thing, kind of like I'm going mmm, and the B, just like the M, are two lips. So the construct of your mouth is similar because if I say books and I say mouse, okay, the, the the mouth 
position is the lips come together. So it sounds like, hey, it could be, uh, it could be, um, it could be sounding like M. But it's actually, I say, ten books. Tim books. I, I I just want to make clear that I'm not saying Tim books, Tim books, because then I would be coming right in to the both of the lips touching from the beginning. I'm not doing that. I'm going to the end sound, but I don't release ten, ten books. But I say it really quickly. Ten books, ten books, as opposed to Tim books, Tim books. You know, it's a very subtle difference, and I don't know if you could hear the difference. Um, yeah, in connected speech, it, it may sound like that, um, but it's a subtle sound. That's right. Um, and what was your other one? Your other one was like a cigarette. Oh, papers. What was it? Paper cigarettes or cigarette? So cigarette. That's a cigarette paper. Right, right. Cigarette. So we're okay. So we're ending on a T. Ta 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 ta. Now T, just like my former example, I would release it. Like if I would say, I want a cigarette. Yeah, I'm exaggerating, of course. But I would release ta. But when I'm uh, connecting it to the next word, cigarette, I'm going to hold it. Cigarette, and then I'm going to come down with my lips. Paper. Cigarette. Paper. And I'm not going to release the T. So, um, you know, that's how we say it. That that makes it flow better. C um, cigarette, cigarette, paper, cigarette. I don't know how the British would do cigarette paper. Maybe they would implode it as well. But uh, um, in North American pronunciation, we hold it. We do not release it. And that's the way, like when you're talking, when you get into pronunciation, you talk about releasing, and it's like, it's basically the tongue letting go. Cigarette, t no, that's letting go. Cigarette, paper. How, how does that make sense uh, to your brain, Wasim? Yeah, right, and I've got a, what you say. Yeah, okay. exactly. It means when we say uh, at the end of the words when consonant sound occurs, uh, they are non-aspirated. Exactly. Ooh, that's a very linguistic word, aspirated. Very good. Yeah, it's not aspirated. Yeah, not exactly. Exactly. Right. Uh, yeah, I, now I've got it, what you say, and I, 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 now I have the answers for these questions as well. Excellent. So, thank you very much, sir. Yo, you're very welcome. And that's all about... Uh, and so, yeah, go ahead. And so one more question about... Is, yeah. is there any concept about glottal stop in uh, American English? Like we do have uh, in Cockney or a Astro English, uh, we say a bit of a on the table. Yeah. So is there any concept about glottal stop in American English? I think what you're asking is do we use a glottal stop in... North American English. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Yeah, um, we, we do, but not as much as, as a, maybe a Cockney British accent would. Um, um, whew, what's an example of a glottal stop? Uh, yeah, I knew you were going to ask that. <laughs> I'm trying to think. Well, because the glottal is the, is the glo glottis is in the back. What, what's that, Johnny? Hitten. Manhattan. Manhattan. Kitten. Okay, yeah, that kind of worked. Manhattan. That's a, you know, in the back. The glottal. Yeah, is mountain. Mountain. Well, Manhattan. Go, go ahead, Johnny. Uh, can important. you say that again? Important. Fountain. Mountain. Mountain. Yeah. Fountain. Fountain. Yeah. Kind of, sort of. Um, glottal. 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 <laughs> He's asking about glottal. Stop. <laughs> I, th I do think that those are good examples. I mean, definitely in uh, in all the books that I've had, Mountain, Fountain, Written, are, are you know, they are examples of that. Of that, but written, yes, written. it's true. Some co Cockney just takes it too far. <laughs> Yeah, mountain, mountain, mountain. Yeah, mountain. I'm just doing... The thing is, when you say mountain, 
mm, it's coming to the front of the mouth and on the end sound. Mount, I'm, I'm going with the T, but I'm holding it. Mount, mm, mm. and then I go, mm. Right uh, into the end. It's not a deep back glottal, you know, like, like especially when we're, you know, looking at a cockney or something. I'm trying to think of a really good word that has a very strong glottal in North American English. Um, if someone could Google it, maybe you could find it, find a really good glottal stop. Um, in right North now. The Dave, why don't you think of, for instance, of oh. the way some people ask the question, where yet? Where, <laughs> where yet? Where yet? Well, I mean, where are you at? Because where you see, the, I think in my opinion, the clearest example of a glottal stop in American English is the T at the end of a word, which is not really released, but held instead. Yeah. Right. Well, uh, right. like Erica right. points out, puts uh, right now, right now. Yeah, it is. I mean, because I'm thinking of it in terms of as I'm saying it, I'm trying to feel where the resonation is in my um, from my throat to the tip of my mouth right now. And there is a glottal in there right now. And at the same time, I'm bringing it to the front uh, for the T because like uh, Jesus said, I'm not releasing the T. It's not aspirated. Right now. Now and I go right, right into now. them. Right now, right now, right, right now, and then yeah, there's... actually, and I wanted to mention something else real quickly here. Mm -hmm. A glottal stop can only replace stop consonants in English, and there are only six of those. So yes, right now is a perfect example of you know of that. Can only say that again. Uh, can only replace six what? Six consonants. Remember, there are only six consonant sounds right. in English which are considered stops and not continuants. You know, that those are P and B, T and D, and K and G. You know, P, B, T, D, K, and G. Only right. six. And those are the only sounds which can be replaced by a glottal stop. Even if you're Cockney? <laughs> <laughs> they t well, yes, well, theirs is very peculiar, but only those six sounds in standard American English, only six sounds can you replace with, uh, with yeah. that. The thing is, our the bottom line is, in terms of regular speech, we don't have strong glottals. And um, that's why I'm trying to come up with something we use in North American English that is an actual strong glottal. And um, I haven't looked at this in a while, but um, th there may be. Uh, I just can't think of anything. That's why if anybody can Google it and find something, that, that would be really strong. Um, I mean, I do have one in mind. I don't know if you still think about it this way, but when you say, uh-oh, maybe. Uh, well, that's stronger. Um, and uh, that's 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 an expression, and that yeah, it's something people use for sure. They say, "Oh, uh oh," uh -oh. and that's <laughs> and if you think about that, you can feel that. You yes, know, you can. Physically. Yes, you can for sure. You can feel it in the back, uh -oh. you know, here in your glottis area. So, uh, uh, it's like, or if you're dying, uh, 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 uh. <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny. I like it. But uh oh, sure, yeah. Um, uh oh is not really a word or a phrase. I, I guess we, it's an expression. Uh oh, it's a good one, and like kids like to say it too, especially. Like, uh oh. Uh, yeah, it really doesn't fit the like. You can't say that it's some. You can't say it's something that will be considered a traditional, you know, word. It sounds more like a. It's not an interjection, I think. I don't think so. Probably more of a... Shoot, I forgot that word right now. Uh, well... Howard. Yeah, go ahead. I'm Sunita. Hi, Sunita. I have texted... Hi. I have texted that how I should pronounce message and massage. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, message like if I'm... Um, Hi, Jang. Uh, just need you to mute your microphone, please, because we're having some uh, background uh, noise there. Um, 
message like, hey, I want to, I'm going to send you a message, or I'm going to message you, text message you, uh, Jang, we need you to please mute your microphone. We're hearing static from your line. Uh, welcome to join, of course. We just need you to click on that microphone. There you go. Excellent. Okay, so I'm going to message you. Me eh, eh. Notice how I'm really hitting that second syllable uh, in the second word, massage meaning I'm going to like rub your shoulders, massage. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a uh, message, massage. Notice how I'm putting the accent on different syllables. So the first one, I'm going to send you a message. I, I'm going to stress that first syllable and I'm saying mess, 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 message you. And then I'm going to say Oh, I'm going to rub your shoulders. I'm going to massage. And when I say it, that second example, I'm opening my mouth more for that ah sound, you know, because um, a lot of people um, with the pronunciation, um, they don't move their mouth enough and they don't get those, they don't stretch those vowels. So massage, I'm exaggerating a bit right now just to show the example, but um, it's important that you're not afraid to give it a little more voice and to stretch that ah sound, massage. Message and massage. Yeah, very massage. nice. Now, the only other thing I want to um, help you out with there is the that G sound at the end is massage, massage, yeah, yeah. Ja. Voice sound, yes? Ja, well, massage. Uh, massage. Massage. Z, yeah. Massage. Okay, you're closer. You're closer. You're sounding yeah. good. Yeah. yeah. Remember, <laughs> massage, that ja sound at the end is the same as visual. And what was the other? Usual. Is the same sound. Usual. That's that's right. Absolutely. I'll yeah. give. I'll get you. I'll give you a massage as usual, <laughs> or something like that. Yeah. I wish I had a usual massage every day. <laughs> I think we would all benefit from that. Oh we, yeah. Could you imagine? I mean, life is so stressful. If we, you know. If any of you have had a massage, you 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 feel so relaxed afterwards and and then life becomes a little better to deal with you you don't get angry or you know yeah, frustrated you don't get i think i've only had them like twice in my life that i can oh, remember really? right now yeah uh. but it wasn't it wasn't that big of a deal i mean it was still something but you're right you know i can't deny how relaxing it is yeah yeah, I've never heard anybody say they don't want a massage. Well, except in the one case, some massages are are very strong. Like they'll 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 push on your body really hard, and then some people don't like that. Or I've heard like some Korean massages, they they scrub your body, and I've heard some people say they scrub too hard. Now, of course, some people like a hard massage, some people like it, but otherwise. I think most people, if you give like a, you know, a Swedish massage, um, those are not so intense, so people tend to like that, but I digress. Um, yeah, yeah, Julio, go ahead. What do you call a person who gives massages? Ah, a masseuse. Kind of sounds like Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, I wanted to ask you because I was kind of thinking about that too. I know that masseuse is like the common word, but I've also heard masseur. Yeah, well, you could say that, but most people say masseuse. I think yeah, masseuse. masseur means like the male. Is that like a gender? I think so. I think so. But yeah. I've heard the word masseuse used to refer to both the genders these days. So. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's kind of like um, people say, "Hey, guys, come on, come on over." You know, and I'm talking to both women and men. <laughs> Guys originally means male, but in today's um, vernacular, people, in a casual sense, people will just say to women and men. But Julio, you were going to say something. Go ahead. 
No, no, no. That was just with the word masseur and masseuse, no? right? Yeah, masseuse. Mo most people in North America will just say masseuse, and they'll refer they'll use it in reference to both male and female, e even though technically masseur, you know, would mean a man. Um, I remember one time a long time ago, um, I was I was like somewhere like on a vacation. I was looking at getting a, a massage, and I was calling these places and. And I was asking, I guess, you know, about the massage and the price and all that. And the guy, and the, it was a man who answered the phone, and he says, "Oh, and I have to tell you that there are no female um, masseuses here, so it would be a man who's giving you a massage." <laughs> you know, and so I, I think he was saying that because some men don't want another man to rub their body or something. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it makes me think of I don't know. If you well, Seinfeld had this episode years ago in which one of the characters had a massage by a man, a, mas a masseur, you know, technically speaking, and he didn't like it at all. <laughs> oh yeah, oh really? I I didn't see that yeah. one. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. It was it was only a short clip, and it was just meant to like show that hey, this guy felt really uncomfortable. He felt like he was being groped or yeah, something. Right. <laughs> yeah, right. When are you gonna leave? <laughs> when is the woman gonna come in? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, Liliana. Um, let me copy some words. And, sure, uh, sure. Could you pronounce them for me, please? Okay. So uh, Liliana put some words in the chat. If you're on Skype, look in the chat. If not, I'll just say them out loud. Okay. So the first two, um, first two words are low, L-O-W, and law. Now this this one's kind of interesting because um, the second word, you know, when you think L-A-W, what are we going to do with that W? Because W. Um, you know, when we use it, especially at the beginning of a word, like word, you know, we hit that W, wa, wa, and we put our lips together really closely, but here we don't at the end. So, low, we do hit the W. We round our lips and we say low. And we. Low. Yeah. Uh, long sound? Low. low. Well, wh what I'm trying to point out is on the W, we make a tight circle with our lips to get that W at the end. Low. 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 Yeah, low. That, that gives it the right color of the sound. Low. But on L-A-W, we just say, ah, la. Ah, la. It's long or short? It's long. La, ah. Ah, ah, la. Yeah, la. What's the la yeah. here? Or... Uh, am I breaking the law? You know, law. I'm just saying, ah, uh, am I breaking the law? I don't want to make it too short, la, because a lot of people learning the second language of English, they'll make it too short. They'll say, la, la. And then mm -hmm. you're like, what? What did you say? I'm, I'm confused. But if you give it a little, if you stretch it a little longer, la, then people are like, oh, I know what you mean. Excellent. Yes, you're you are. You're breaking the law. <laughs> Right. You're breaking right. the law. Breaking the law. Was a Judas Priest had a song. If anyone knows, oh Sergey probably knows. He's our he's our uh, heavy metal uh, 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 compadre here. Uh, breaking the law by Judas Priest. Um, it's a heavy no. metal song. No. They say breaking the law, breaking the law. No. <laughs> so anyway, like, oh. yeah, <laughs> yeah. But that's a good question. Um, because uh, I've heard that wrong many times. Um, effect, effect. You know, these are often pronounced the same. Like uh, we have, a f depending on the context, though, we have a f f e c t, affect, and then we have effect. I mean, technically, they are pronounced a little differently because the second one is an e e e effect, e yeah. sound. Affect, and we we talk about the affective filter in linguistics sometimes. Or af I was, you know, and there is a different meaning. And oh man, 
the, the, the meaning can be so subtle, but w one aspect in terms of meaning is how you feel. Like when you spell it A-F-F-E-C-T, I was affected and, and mm -hmm. so sad by the story you told. I don't know what to do, <laughs> you know. And then yeah, was I was like, deeply affected. <laughs> yeah. yeah, deeply affected. Right, right, right. Um, then I could say the effect of the class um, um, allowed Liliana to get a new job, or you know, it, it was a good effect um, uh, uh, from the. Uh, help me out, Jesus. Uh, give me an example of the effect. Effect. Well, you could say this class had a a profound effect on whoever. On Liliana, for instance, let's just use her as an example. <laughs> on you know, the world, come on. Exactly. On the world. A profound effect. <laughs> had a profound effect on all of us. There Why you not? go. Why right. not? <laughs> but, hey, I wanted to mention this real quickly because I think this is really interesting. The first one, effect, has another meaning, which is not really used that much, but I think it's really interesting, and it means to fake something. You know, he was affecting uh, sorrow or interest in something. It's really literary, but I think it's pretty cool. It's cool. It's to look a verbal noun. Uh, what's that, Sunita? I am saying maybe effect we are using for verb and effect for noun. Um, the the effect it had on us, and I am affecting you. Um, it, it, well, it can be used in those two ways. True, yes. Yes, indeed. You can uh, make that distinction. It does help you. <clears throat> mm -hmm. okay. um, the changes of the, of the climate uh, uh, affect uh, the, know, the lower world. The yeah, lower affected world, my mood. The weather. Yeah, or the changes of the climate affect my mood. Like if it's... Uh, cold and gloomy and rainy, maybe I feel sad, you know. So um, the effect of the weather, uh, the weather has an effect on my mood. Uh, yeah, you could say that. Um, Seasonal yeah. affective disorder, sad. Actually, you, you oh, can so see, you can find disorder. it like that. It, it's yeah. real, it's real. You know, the so-called winter blues. There's also a use of effect. God, we're probably going to confuse people, but you know, it means like you're a little crazy. Uh, they don't really use it so much today, but if you see like in older literature or in movies, they'll say, eh, "I think she's a bit affected," and that means that she's maybe going a little crazy, um, a little so, off. <laughs> yeah, a little, a little. I sorry to to repeat. Yep. Pronounce uh, this word in the same way. There's a subtle difference, you know, in uh, pronunciation. Affected. Um, uh, af I w um, okay, I was affected. The like affective affective filter is gonna you're gonna stress that a little bit more. I'm trying to think in terms of effect like seasonal affective disorder. Affective. affective. The effect is different here. There's a subtle difference, Liliana, but it's very small. And it as a as a pronunciation instructor, I would say don't worry about trying to get that perfect because it's just it's not a big deal you know and people will understand what you mean um, as long as you say what was the effect you had if if you say it like that the context will dictate the word and it's just not something to worry about not one of those where somebody is going to misunderstand you or anything like that and then we just <coughs> got into different uses of it but yeah, I, you know, don't get into those kind of esoteric uses. They they don't even matter so much. I only the pronunciation. Okay. Yeah. And besides, once something else I wanted to mention is that the difference is so subtle that I've seen articles written by professionals in which they misspell the words, and they right. clearly meant, you know, yeah, the, the other. other one. And that happens all the time. Um, in English, um, it it really has no 
or at least in my opinion, it has no bearing on how educated or smart somebody is. Um, that these these words, you know, English, the the complexities, you know, people just get it wrong, you know. But you know, it's it's just a little mistake. It's looked upon as a very little mistake and uh, no big deal. So, yeah, you could almost you could almost say it is somehow well to some extent it is inconsequential. You could say. Yes. But, but then again, if you want, if you want to be really picky about it, you know. <laughs> but no, most people are, are not going to be like that. Right, Sunita, you were saying. Yes, yes. They being an Indian, I have some problem because in India we are speaking very fast. Before I was yeah. speaking very fast. Now I control over my speaking speed, but still when I am speaking slowly. I cannot manage rhythm of English. It means it seems like I am throwing word words, then I am adding other one, then again I am adding other one. Like English people, there is no rhythm in my speaking. It seems like I am stucking. Well, I am having some. Yes. I understand what you're saying. Yes. I mean, th there is there is a rhythm, but it's not a rhythm maybe that you're happy with. Um, I understand yes. what you're saying. Like I am putting one word after another yes. word and this is the way right so okay let me say a few things one is it's very good that you are aware that you're speaking that you were speaking too fast um, a lot of people from your region and not just India mm -hmm. um, they're very fluent with English. They speak fast, and then nobody can understand them. <laughs> so, yes, the, the most important thing is is uh, comprehension. Is for people to understand you. So, mm -hmm. even if you feel a little weird or uncomfortable with sl speaking slower. Um, don't worry, and if if somebody even makes a negative comment to you about that, don't pay attention to that because our most important thing is to be understood. And when I understand you, I can connect with you. And this is a learning process. So one thing that I mm -hmm. tell you, uh, Sunita, and everybody else is, do not worry about what other people think. You are working on your English skills and you are getting better and better as time goes on and that's all that matters. And uh, everybody makes mistakes and you have everybody, uh, we're, we're people from all over the world. We all have different accents. So now if you want to have a different rhythm, you, you can do some connecting. And, and and pick up your rate of speech a little bit, but what I don't want you to do, Sunita, is mm -hmm. to stop articulating the sounds because that's what happens. They'll say like, um, um, I say like for instance, if I'm articulating, I'm exaggerating right mm -hmm. now. It was nice, okay. Sunita, to see you at the coffee shop. I really enjoyed the conversation and the things that you told me about. Okay, I'm articulating all the sounds and the words. I'm not moving too slow, I'm not moving too fast. But if I start saying, hey, it was nice meeting you at a coffee shop, you know, it was really great, the things that you said, you know, um, but, you know, I can't really, I mean, maybe I can do, I, I don't know, I can try to do an Indian accent, but it's, <laughs> I'm gonna fail. But if I talk a little bit faster, not even fluent with it, but, but I, I miss a lot of time. The thing is, what happens is, when you start speaking faster, we lose a lot of consonants and some other mm -hmm. sounds too. So, we gotta hold and on to those sounds. When I'm speaking very fast, mm -hmm. I am very fluent, okay? Yes. When I'm going to slow myself, then my mind is going towards only making slow my conversation. It makes me a little bit, it, it lost my fluency also. So before I was very fluent when I was talking very fast. And now my mind is dwelling towards only slow down, slow down, slow down like that. So I mean, what what is going on? Are you are you how are you feeling inside when that's happening? I feel 
bad. I want to talk, but I'm stuck in after every words because I'm forcing myself to speak slowly. Right. Okay. So let me say a few things about that. Um, mm -hmm. We are okay. One of the phrases that maybe relates to this is uh, get. We need to get comfortable being uncomfortable sometimes with language. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, I understand that you're very comfortable speaking faster because there's several dynamics going on. One dynamic is the ideas and thoughts in your brain are, are flowing, moving at a certain speed. And you want those to come out of your mouth at that same speed because that's the connection between your brain and your mouth. You're speaking. Now, when you're using English and you're improving this skill of English, mm -hmm. unfortunately, uh, we have to change that uh, as we work with it. So, just like when I work with, like, uh, perhaps, let's say I have a class of beginning English speakers, I'm going to slow down my speech, and that kind of throws me off as a human being. But I can also get get comfortable with it and I need to relax myself if I there there's a lot of anxiety and tension that comes about when we use another language and we're trying to use another language and one of the best things we can do is to preempt that by relaxing ourselves and you could look at this as mindfulness. You could look at this as a sort of meditation. Like, okay, mm -hmm. let's say if you speak Hindi most of the time mm -hmm. and you know, oh, I'm going to talk to Dave in a few minutes. I'm going to speak English. You can kind of uh, take a minute, 30 seconds, and take some deep breaths and say, I'm going to be very calm my anxiety is going to be very low and I'm gonna speak at a different slower rate of speech and it's okay and it's got I'm gonna be feel good taking some deep breaths being mindful as you're speaking in the back of your mind you could say it's okay that I'm speaking slower it's okay I enjoy this it's the right thing to do say positive things about that and try to reduce the anxiety this is something that a lot of English teachers never talk about, which is the anxiety, the tension that comes into using a second language. And if we can calm ourselves down and, whoa, Adolfo, we need you to turn off your microphone because we're getting some uh, background noise. There we go. Um, if we can calm ourselves down, then we won't feel so awkward, you know, with all of that. And um, we can start speaking slowly, and you can start connecting some things, uh, Sunita, and you will start speaking a little faster, and it will have a different rhythm. Um, Hello. Thank you, Dave. You're welcome. And Dave, how many words I should speak in a minute? Oh, <laughs> as many as you want. Um, not too many. I mean, there's no... Oh, I, I don't get really scientific with, like, how many words in a minute. Like, I, I don't have a formula in front of me. But okay. what what is important for everybody, and I'm going to come to you, Hamza, in one second, so hold on. Um, okay. One uh, thing is that... When I'm speaking to somebody else, I need to connect with them. So that means that you should try making sure that if you're speaking to that other person that they're comprehending you. So say things like, are you understanding what I say? Or do you, do you understand me? Or even saying something like, am I speaking too fast? All of those things. Oh, Adolfo, we need you to turn off your microphone. I'm sorry. Yeah, I had to hang up. He's just, he. I think he's on a cell phone still and he's having problems. But anyway, um, 
A very smart communicator is somebody who takes an extra step when they're talking. And, oh, whoa, oh, okay. Oh, ouch. Dwa, dwa, dwa. Dwa, we need you to mute your microphone. Dwa, ouch, ouch. Okay. Oh my wow, I know. It really uh, it can be painful if you're wearing Goodness, ear that was that was scary. That's like a shot of espresso. You know, just the, look at that as a shot of uh, dark coffee. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that'll give us a jolt. <laughs> yeah, jolt. Yeah. Okay, so this this is the point. Of, um, Hello, I, hi there, Gassim. Hold on one second. I'm, uh, I'm very good. Very good, thanks. Thanks for joining us. Okay, the, the, hold on one. Continue. Yes, thank you. Okay, so a very smart communicator will, during the conversation, will, will say things pleasantly, and they'll say it like this. Does, do you understand me clearly? Um, or am I speaking too fast? Or am I speaking too slow? Um, not, they're not going to say that all the time, but they're going to put it in there. They're going to take charge of the communication. And if you take that extra step, it's much easier uh, to do than people think. You are commanding that. And, and the other person will most likely be polite and say, um, oh, no, you don't, like, oh, don't, you don't need to say that. But the thing is, you do need to say it because you're taking charge and you want to make sure that that person because what I see all the time with you people using second language is person A is speaking to person B and, and okay. person A let's say is speaking too fast and person B is not understanding a lot of what this person A is saying and you know what person B will do oftentimes they'll just smile and nod and say, ah, oh, okay, but they don't really understand, you know, because they don't, they don't know how to handle the situation without creating a problem, and they're afraid of creating a problem. Um, so if the speaker takes charge and says, do you, do you know what I mean by this word or this phrase, then you're connecting with that person, okay? Yeah. So go try that. It'll it could make a huge difference. And if there is a misunderstanding, or if there is um, a some kind of a um, break in the communication, make a joke, laugh at it, because that reduces the tension, and then people feel more relaxed and they feel they can connect more. And it's a wonderful thing yes, to do. Thank yeah. Thank you. Thank You're you. welcome. Okay, now we're gonna go to Has ha Hamza. Hamza, yeah. Hamza. Yeah, uh, um, uh, because I'm, I need actually to, to go and to leave uh, in five minutes and I have uh, one of my students here and she really like to say something for you. Oh, sure, go right ahead. What's your, uh, have your student introduce herself or himself. Okay, uh, she, she's with She, you. okay. Tell me please. Wait, um, hold on, we're getting... So, okay, somebody is. Okay, can you start again, please? There was some noise on the line. Uh, hello. Hello. I'm v very good. What's your name? My name is Rifa. Stefa? Rifa. Stefa. Mm. Okay. N nice Tell to... Me, please. What's the easy way to learn English in uh, a few times? <laughs> oh, I wish I had the answer to that. I would be Actually, a very. Dave, she is in, just in the beginning of learning English, so oh. she, uh, that's why she asked that. Ah, that's fine. That's fine. Well, she's. You must be doing a good job, Hamza. She sounds very good, and. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah she's actually in the first uh, week. Okay. Okay. Excellent. Excellent. Well. Um, uh, yeah, that's very nice. And um, yeah, as as many of us know, um, learning language is uh, there's for most of us there's no easy trick, and there's no 
you know, really quick way. But um, of course, having a good teacher like Hamza may uh, solve all of her questions. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, she just want to try, and uh, I I told her about you and uh, uh, and you as you encourage uh, the new students, let's say, to to learn English. That's why. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. I'm, I, you know, and that's one of the things I believe in is um, is to encourage my students and to, you know, know that the mistakes are not a problem and uh, you, you know feel comfortable, feel comfortable with me so that we can we can work at it and uh, you will grow and you will feel better and hopefully you'll enjoy it, you know, yeah, because. I do. Yeah, what could be, because once you once you start using the language, it, it can be so much fun, and it can add so much to your life. So I think that's great you're uh, doing that, Hamza. Yeah, yeah, I do actually, and uh, she is smart, and uh, she likes to to learn actually, and to. But she, you know, the problem she wants to get the the whole vocabularies, uh, the English vocabularies, uh, uh, the same time. And yeah. The, the one time to say. I told her you need to, to 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 get it not one time you need to time enough time to to get uh, let's say a few words to to speak to and to start speaking English. Uh, I don't know if it is uh, right or not. Yeah, absolutely. Just start with a few at a time, and um, and then start teaching. Uh, I mean, I was going to make a joke about the baby. Yeah. Oh, oh, poor baby. Um, it's good. <laughs> now here it, Dave. Now here it is twelve o'clock, near to twelve o'clock. It's good to have this kind of sound so that it will not make me sleepy. Yeah, right. There you go. <laughs> I like your attitude, Sunita. That's very positive. Thank you. <laughs> looking on the bright side. Yeah, looking on the bright side. Exactly. Oh, that's great. And Dave? Yeah. Dave, do you know when I was talking before with American people, they are saying, Sunita, are you angry on me? Are you yelling on me? Uh -huh. The way I was speaking so fast, <laughs> they didn't understand. And then say, hey, 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 Sunita, are you yelling on me? <laughs> and then I started to speak slow, slow, slow. Right, right. Well, just know, Sunita, you're not alone because people from your not not just your country, but the region of the world you live in, are you know, are are like that. And I'm coaching people to slow down. And when 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 you slow down, I can understand you. And your accent, by the way, sounds quite nice. You know, um, usually with people I work with, I I my goal isn't to get rid of an accent a hundred percent. Um, it's to make you comprehensible. Um, many people in the West, wh whether it's Europe or uh, North America, um, th they they often appreciate your accent. They enjoy it, you know. Um, but that you know, but we need you to speak slower so we can understand you. And then we do understand you. And then it's like, wow, it's great. I have a new friend. I can talk to her, and. Uh, we're we're exchanging rich language, and it's a very good thing. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. So yeah, let's see. Let's see. Okay. Um, we're, we're, oh yeah. So I was gonna try to finish off on a few of these with uh, Liliana had a few more words, which were um, bear. Bear is pronounced the same way, Liliana, B-A-R-E. Um, my um, kitchen is bear, like I don't have any food. And then there's a bear, which is an animal, big, be beautiful animal, bear. So they're pronounced the same way, bear, but we, you know, we have that R, bear. And, um, yeah. and jeans and jeans are pronounced the same way. And if you're not looking in the chat at her... Uh, her uh, words, um, G E N E S, like um, my genetic makeup, and then J E A N S are pants, pronounced exactly the same way. Deer 
and dear pronounced exactly the same way, like dear Liliana. Yeah. I haven't spoken to you in so long. You know, D E A R. Or there's a deer, the animal, uh, which I, when I was in Japan, I got to pet wild deer. Well, awesome. They weren't, they weren't so wild. They were very tame. I mean, I've never, I never was, I, I never had the opportunity to pet a deer before. Um, but um, these deer, they'll come right up to you and you can pet them and you can pet their antlers, you know, and they have like fur on their antlers. It was really interesting. Die and die, pronounced the same way, D-I-E. Um, I hope I don't uh, ever die. <laughs> and then I am... <laughs> or, at least, or at least you hope you don't die a painful death. <laughs> sure. Like, we all, we all want to pass, you know, yes. we, wa we all want it to be painless, we have to be honest about it. Yes, but some of us are afraid of dying. Like we 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 know this world, and we're because we don't really know what the next world is. Like, do we just stop existing, or is there a heaven? Is there another kind of uh, place? Is there another world? You know, depending on our philosophy or religion. <coughs> so it can be scary. But anyway, D Y E. I'm gonna dye my clothes red. You know, that's a color. Or dye your hair blue. <laughs> yeah. I, I've wanted to dye my hair blue before. I like blue. I like when I see people with blue hair. I think that's cool. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I like blue. I don't know. It's it's one of my it's one of my favorite colors. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna tell you something interesting. My fiance sister, she had her hair she had her hair dyed blue for the time that I was there in Michigan last year. So you know. Oh, cool. Cool. Yep. See, I like that. Kasim, what were you saying? <laughs> yeah, die, Dave. Uh, blue, that means you are very angry and very... <laughs> 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 that? Blue means I'm angry? <laughs> blue and yellow, that's colors that uh, can be expressed for the state of people or... or well, the true. well, you bring up a good point, Kasim, because like, yeah. if, I, if I say I am feeling blue, it does yeah. mean I'm feeling depressed. Like I'm feeling sad. Yeah, you're right. That's what it means. Um, feeling blue. But I, but the color itself, like you know, the sky is blue, the ocean is blue. Blue. Yeah. I, it's kind of a happy color to me. Anyway. But when you want to dye your hair as blue, that means you put some uh, color in your head. Yes. Right? Yes. <laughs> I, I dye my hair blue. Yeah. I put color in my hair. It's like, oh, are you going to dye your hair? Like when I was a little kid, I heard that. And I'm like, why would you want to kill your hair? You know, because I thought it meant, you know, D-I-E. You know, I'm like, you know, when you're a little kid learning the language, you're like, but mommy, why are you going to kill your hair? That's <laughs> <laughs> true. I never dye my, my hair. Oh, God, you're lucky. Um you know, like my mom, she got gray hair very young in life, so I think she started dyeing her hair when she was in her 20s, like early 20s. Really? Yeah, and I had a girlfriend uh, a, a while back who also her hair started turning gray um, in her 20s. And I remember a guy I went to college with, he was in his early 20s, um, and his hair was uh, half gray. And he was like, you know, like 20 years old, you know, and he had all this gray in his hair. Yeah. That's pretty. I wonder why, I mean, sometimes people just to, as a euphemism, will say, it's not gray hairs. It's silver hairs. <laughs> you know? Silver, yeah, they say, yeah. not gray. Silver. Actually, you really can't make it out here, but I do have some gray hairs. You do. I do. I do. And age. So it means experience, wisdom. wisdom. There you go. See, that's the way it, it's a sign of wisdom and experience. Not age. Don't say age, please. <laughs> yeah, age is only a number. <laughs> you could say. Your hair. What what's that, Lilianda? Uh, at the age of fifty, what? Uh, uh, okay, I I heard I've read uh, it 
you uh, getting uh, dyeing your hair when you you are so younger? Uh -huh. Maybe when you turn um, 50 or 40, or when you are in your 40s or 50, yeah. uh, you lost uh, your hair. Or you spoil it. Oh, I see. It might damage uh, your hair and make you lose it. Uh, yes. Yeah, I've heard of the chemicals. Yeah, the chemicals. Yeah, could, yeah, I've heard that before. Like if you damage it, it may um, yeah cause some problems. Uh -huh. Yeah. Um, it's better to, to be natural. <laughs> it might be better to be natural to keep it healthy. Yeah. Um, let's see. Yeah, yeah. Abash and Abesh. How we will pronounce these two words? Abash. Um, no, I, I uh, can you see what is in one of the words that I. Did you see them? A base and a bash. Did you see them? Oh, a bash. Um, a base. God, these are words we certainly don't use much. Um, uh, a base and a bash. Uh, yeah. I don't. Re I don't remember what a base means anymore. Yeah, I'm gonna have to. Google this. I mean, I know that a bash basically means that somebody is like shy or he is, you know, or a person keeps to himself. And, um, like, um, like bash, I wonder if it comes from bashful in terms of a I bash. think it does. I think it does. A bash, yeah. A bash means to destroy somebody's confidence, um, to make them ashamed or, or to embarrass somebody. To abash someone by sneering, but I I need to tell you that in North American English we do not use that word much at all. Um, okay. So. But normally we use it when suppose teacher he wanted to scold in front of whole class. That moment the child what he feels that is called abash. Yes, right. That that's true. That's true. Um, I'm just uh, pointing out that um, it's not used that much. Um, and a base to reduce um, to reduce in rank, uh, office, reputation, estimation, to humble somebody, to abase them, to degrade them. He abased yes. his head. Yeah. Um, also not used too much in North American English, but uh, that's that's how they're pronounced. Um, this so. for us Indian people, how we will know that is a North American, that is South American. It's very hard to know for us. Yeah, it is hard, but that's that's what I'm for. <laughs> you ask me. <laughs> but, I'm not getting you all day. <laughs> I know. I'm gonna I'm gonna make myself an app so I can be on your cell phone and you can ask me all day. <laughs> okay. That'll be no my problem. face. <laughs> I can. You. But you know the thing what I what I do uh, encourage people to do who come on the call with me is just if you any of these questions come up during your week try to make a note write them down and then come on the call on Saturday and ask me I'll I'll help you out. Hi Dave. Yeah. Uh, uh, bus, um, bus and bass and bass yeah. and bass. Yeah. It's a, a musical instrument. Yeah, well, the thing is, okay, yeah, this is where it gets a little um, a little different yep. um, because, okay, she has B-A-S-S, -S, and then she has B-A-S-E, okay? Uh, and um, let me, is somebody trying to get it? Okay, and so, okay, first of all, bass is could be a fish, B-A-S-S, -S, and we pronounce it bass, so it's ah, bass. Uh, Bass. Bass. Yeah. And then um, we have B A S E, bass, pronounced long A, bass, bass, like first bass in baseball. Um, um, bass. Yeah, the military bass. Yeah. Uh, but in a musical instrument, we pronounce it bass, and it's spelled B A S S. So, uh, the same? yeah, the same yeah. Thing. Yeah, so it gets a little confusing there. Like he plays uh, the bass. Um, bass. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 
so bass um, bass guitar yeah there you go I was trying to think of the instrument like he plays the bass guitar uh, yeah and it's it's spelled B A S S so that's where it gets confusing but it's only for the musical instrument mm -hmm. oh. yeah uh, and then male and male pronounced the same way M A L E we're talking about gender he is a male, uh, she is a female, so male. And then I'm going to mail you a letter or send you an email. Uh, they're pronounced exactly the same. Male. Uh, male, male. Yeah, uh, okay, male. Okay. Right, right. Okay. Hello, Hello there. What's in the mail? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Hi, sir. Um, when we say the uh, aspirated her sound, I mean, so what would be our mouth? Should we open it a bit? I uh, mean, so medium wide or something when you say like the word car. Car, the yes. Medi where the middle part of the tongue goes to touch the soft palate. <laughs> we're back in the mouth. Yeah, well, it's not really the soft palate. It's just, it's at the rear of the hard palate, yeah. which is close to the soft palate. So, yeah, yeah you're yeah. right, Wasim. You're right. It's a medium wide mouth opening. So, we're car. car um, uh, for what word? For for aspirating the k sound. Oh k. Oh yeah 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 yeah. You have to because k k k k. Yeah. And that's why, mm -hmm. like in my in my videos, um, I I show exaggerations and I really show the mouth movement because a lot of people, um, learning the language don't feel comfortable moving their mouth and a lot of times to get these sounds correct you have to move your mouth so you have to have like a medium wide opening because if I keep my mouth closed and I say are you going to keep it in there? are you going to keep it there you know it's like what what did you say but I say are you going to keep it there or um, I have a cup of coffee you know I you know, I really hear it it's just so clear and nice you know people are afraid of making faces and you have to make faces if you want yeah, to get yeah, this right yep. Faces and and then the faces. Uh, that's why I say when you first do it to exaggerate because it it tells your brain that you're doing something different and that you're changing a habit. And then when you get more comfortable with it, it won't be so big. You know, it's better to go big at first and then you bring it back because a lot what do people do? There's people who live here in in North America who have lived here for 20 years and they're they're still not moving their mouth enough. And they're they're, they're, still, all. <laughs> you know, and they're and they're just struggling with the language because of it. But uh, yeah, Wasim, did you have something else uh, there? Yes. Yeah, so another question about the th voiceless sound. Yes. We say that we stick our tongue out of our mouth. We get our tongue out of our mouth, and then we release air slightly from our mouth. Um, can we pronounce this word? Without sticking our tongue out of the mouth, can we do like, for example, thank you, where we stick our tongue um, out of our mouth, and instead of saying that way, uh, thank you, releasing air but not getting the tongue out of the mouth. Well, I mean, you you could put your tongue right behind your teeth, and some people do that. Um, mm -hmm. Like, yeah. thank you, thank you. You know, like I can say, let's say, uh, this this is very th thick. Um, the thing is, um, well, let me say two things about this. One is, um, a lot of people do stick their tongue out, you know, beyond their front teeth a little bit. They don't do it a lot. Like when I teach it, I show a lot of tongue because I'm exaggerating and most people are not used to doing this at all. So it's a big change. Um, but we just got to get the sound right. So if I say thank you, thank you for doing that, thank you. And it works, the right sound comes out with my tongue being just behind my teeth, sure. But sometimes it doesn't work. And, and for, for it to work with some people's mouths, you really got to push it out. But if it sounds right behind your front teeth, sure. Um, I, I've seen this argument come up a little bit. Like some people say, oh, you don't have to have it pushed out. Well, right. Um, some people can make it because your your mouth is, if you will, is a bit like a musical instrument. And you can get similar sounds by doing some different things with it. But we're all different. The shape of our mouths are different. The size of our tongues are different. Our 
teeth structure is different. So there's a lot of different things. We certainly cannot paint it with one brush all the time. But <laughs> what I describe is for most people and to try to get people to make the sound correctly. But there are people who can make it without pushing the tongue beyond the front teeth. Yeah, and I guess the other thing is that those people are the exception rather than the norm. That's true. Absolutely. They're the exception. Um, most people will push their tongue out a little bit. But people grow up with the language. Like if you if you talk to somebody from North America who's not into linguistics, you know, they they, they don't even think about it. Yep. They don't even know that they're doing it, you know, because they they grew up, you know, from a baby doing it. So you know, it's like uh, they don't know how to explain it or articulate it. So it's yeah. like it, it's like when you ask people how do you define walking, it's hard because we don't. All of those things are automated; they are automatic, and you know that's just too difficult. Right. We certainly don't like. Yeah, you have like a little baby or something, and you don't. You don't really teach it to walk, <laughs> you know. Yeah. It's like, you know, first put pressure on your heel, and the baby's like, ah, that, 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 that. <laughs> yeah, you know? I know. Um, the baby watches and tries to mimic, and and it's similar with language. So yeah, yeah. definitely. Hey, I wanted to say one thing here for you guys before I forget, because it will be leaving in a few minutes, but uh, my fiance and I, for the past two weeks, we've been hosting three Google Hangouts a week, free practice, a free class, and, you know, you can message me on Google Plus if you want to participate for next week's sessions, and also, um, I finally started offering private one-to-one -one tutoring sessions over Skype or Google Hangouts, so if you would like to have, I'm also a teacher, and if you'd like to have some one-to-one -one time with me, you just have to message me. Okay, so there's the plug for... <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, so, yeah, go ahead. Dave, uh, I have very much trouble when I'm speaking R, okay? Right. R word especially. I have seen so many times your video clip on YouTube, uh -huh. but I want to have some R words, means so many R words from you from your voice. But I don't find out that kind of R words kind of in your yeah, in your video in my videos on YouTube. Right. On I, YouTube. I, I don't have an R video and that's probably a good one to do. R Gasim, we hear some background noise there. Oh, it sounds like a kids party. They won't allow us to sleep. Yeah, right. See, they're having a good time there. <laughs> yeah, <tar. laughs> um, our, Yeah, first of all, in, you know, the North America... Oh, Gassim, we're getting some buzzing sound now. If you could just click on the microphone icon in your Skype window under everybody's name and picture, <laughs> then we would not get that sound. Yeah. Um, okay, so... Yes, a, a couple things I want to say about R, and one is different from the way the uh, British folks will say it because they they don't have that strong R. They'll say like instead of saying better, they'll say better, you know. So a different thing there, um, and there's nothing wrong with British English, you know. Um, I I just happen to be from North America and um, you know the my focus uh, in graduate school and uh, in terms of you know teaching has been in North American English pronunciation but getting the R sound can be tricky like um, you know as many of you know um, uh, you know it can be very because there's there's tongue positions that can just be hard to show because it's more inside the mouth. Um, so if I say things like er, 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 um, we can push the mouth, like one way of trying to go about it is er, is the, the, towards the back of your mouth area, on both sides 
of your tongue, if they touch your top teeth, your molars, the back teeth, and then you kind of push your lips out, er, er, er. Yeah. Now, a lot of folks who have difficulty with the R sound, they round the sound too much. They sound a little like O in there, like O, O, O. And I'm trying to get a flatter sound of er, er, er. So the back of my tongue touches the top molars, and and my I push my lips out a bit, er. Er, and I say better, um, or when I when I say an R from the beginning of word, it could be a little different. Er, er. I can round my lips a little closer, and I could say rock. It's almost like I'm saying the W, but it's not that tight. I'm saying rock, uh, roll, um, uh, Richard, R Richard. And Randy. <laughs> and the thing is, this is an area that, like, if we got into a, um, uh, what do they call it, pathologist, uh, a... Uh, speech language pathologist. Yeah, yeah, speech pathologist. What, what, what they do in terms of uh, pronunciation is sometimes they, they have these little... Um, little kind of, they're like sticks with little shapes on the end and they try to push your tongue. They'll actually stick it in your mouth while you're trying to make a word or a sound and they'll try to push your tongue and they'll like pull on your lip a little bit to try to get your mouth in the right position. <laughs> in, um, in English uh, language uh, teaching, we don't usually do that. Um, mm -hmm. The thing is, what I often say about the R sound is, Okay, look at your mouth like a musical instrument. I'm going to give you some of these hints in terms of where to move your mouth, how to put the pressure with the air. But I need you to also try to find the sound by playing with the instrument, by shaping your tongue a little bit this way, a little bit that way. It's like a tuning it. And then with, with that, oftentimes people can find the sound because... Like I mentioned earlier, all of our mouths are a little different, and um, we need to kind of find it within ourselves to get that hard R better. So, Sun, was it uh, Sunita? Uh, why don't you? Uh, how, how do you pronounce R? Like, say a few words with that ending of the R sound. Uh, then everyone starts laughing. Okay, no problem. <laughs> uh, very. Very. Yeah, very. Road. Road. Right. 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 Yeah, right. Run. Okay, so. Rabbit. Rabbit. Okay, one of the things that, in terms of coming from your native language, you're saying like road, uh, very, and you're kind of saying it like your tongue is going up, and the tip of your tongue is touching lightly to your alveolar ridge. Very, very, and um, it is very good. Very, very, very. So, I'm. What we need to do is change your tongue position, quite drastically. So keep your the tip of your tongue down. Very, very. Sometimes I'll tell students, with the tip of your tongue, press your lower teeth, the inside of your lower teeth, to keep your tongue down. It like to force your tongue down. Press on your lower front teeth and then say very without your tongue moving up try it now very okay see very. and that's different right it feels different i hope very. now very. very and now try it again with the back of your tongue touching your top molars in the back very 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 yeah, but your tip went up. I heard it because you went very. <laughs> and then I am Indian. I have to speak R. If I say but like mm, bad uh, means if I keep silent R because it is second language of India, so very hard to understand by listener, especially from Indian listener. If I will not pronounce R proper way, I have to pronounce R 
I cannot follow British accent. Yes. Well. Well. Okay. Okay. I, I hear what you're saying, and um, you know, yeah. So it's, it's a rolling R. That's right, uh, Wasim. Rolling or trilling. Um, absolutely. Um, one of the things I want to say to that is that although it's different, we in the West we often understand you fine when you roll it. Um, so. Mm -hmm. You know, it's important to, to know that. Um, but if you want to adopt this um, stronger R sound, you know, uh, you, you gotta, you know, it's it's a it's a it's a big habit to change. And your brain, uh, that that's one of the obstacles of language learning is your brain does not want to change. So you have to tell your brain we're doing things a different okay, way. Babe, it is not my brain. It is my tongue and mouth. It's not good to change. <laughs> yes, yes, indeed. But your brain controls your tongue and mouth. <laughs> Very wise words, my friend. <laughs> but yes, your Dave is right. Habits. You know, language learning to a very large extent is all about habit formation. And yes, old habits die hard. Yeah. So. That, that's First, let me perfect my mouth and uh -huh. my tongue. Then only I make habit to my brain. Yeah, I should speak this way. Sure, yeah. That's kind of like the approach going from the outside in. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's fine. But so what, what I want you to practice, uh, Sunita, is, is getting the back of your tongue, the, each side of your tongue, touching the top back teeth and holding the tip of your tongue down when you say that R sound, so you're going to say very. I'm even, you know, mispronouncing it, but I'm just very, very. But your tongue sounds like it's going up in the front, still. Yes, it's going up. Yeah, you got to hold it down. You got to get some rope and tie it down. Very. <laughs> yeah. Very. But hey, make it real yeah. slow and go very. Who cares? Yeah, don't don't worry about how you sound, how you look, anything. Don't worry. It, we got to take it one step at a time, and this 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 is a fine way to start. Very. I just don't want to hear you say very. The if your tip of the tongue goes up, yeah, you're you're gonna you're gonna get it wrong. So practice yeah. that, but don't stress out about it, Sunita. Just take your time with it and practice keeping the tip down in the front and the back sides up against your molars. Uh, and uh, who is it, Sunita, that you're talking to, right? Yeah, Sunita. Yeah. Now, I wanted to say that, you see, the day, the day, Dave is right, and I never thought about it this way, but when it comes to these very specific aspects of language, you discover it eventually. But I can guarantee you the day that you discover where the sound happens and and the day that the day that you can recreate it, you are gonna be elated. I'm and I'm and I'm gonna tell you why. Because the day that I learned how to correctly say THs, I was I was you know I was, I was really excited, and um, I think I told this story a bit before. You know that years ago, little some ten years ago or so, I learned how to say ths right, and when I did, I was so excited. I spent the rest of the day saying this sound to myself. Yeah, it it, so. it, it, well, it is it is uh, pretty. Good. Yeah, isn't that cool? Uh, it is pretty. Uh, Exciting, um, you know, when you when you get certain sounds, and then with that maybe a word, you know, correctly, and it's like, wow, you know, now I'm I'm really, you know, I've moved up another level, and I'm I'm assimilating into that language more. It does feel great. I mean, it's one of, I mean, once you start using that second language more, with more control. It's a great feeling. It's like, wow, you've really accomplished something. It makes you feel fantastic. Yeah, and you feel you feel great, you know? That's it. I mean, there's no other way to put it.
You feel right. good about it. Yeah, that's right. And maybe Susita can record herself. And then uh, I think it's a good feedback when you listen to yourself yes. in another language. I did it, yeah. and it, it worked for me. Yeah, it can be a. You're you're right, Lillian. It can be a great tool to record yourself <clears throat> and then to listen to yourself. It's a. Uh, it hits the brain differently, and it it could be a good self instruction tool. Yeah, yeah, it's really smart. Smart to do. Hello, guys. I'm late. Hey there. How's it going? Let's see. Who's that? Leandro. Yep. Yes. Leandro. Well, why don't you say hi and tell us where you're from, Leandro? Oh, hello guys. Uh, I'm Leandro. I live in the United States, but I'm originally from Brazil. From Brazil. Woohoo! Oh, wow. Very yeah. cool. Where do you live in the States, Leandro? Uh, I live in Minneapolis, uh, in Minnesota. Minnesota. It's quite warm there right now, right? It's like uh, <laughs> degrees. Oh you guys are like going, you know, getting suntan and wearing shorts. <laughs> There's so many people. What? Like orange color because they like do fake. Tan. Oh, they do fake tan. Oh, I see. <laughs> but man, Minneapolis, Minnesota. What took you that far away into the north? I think school, right? You're going to school there. Yes, I'm going to school. Yeah, right. Uh, I'm going for paralegal, and then eventually finish my BA in legal studies and going to law school. He's going to be a lawyer. Wow. Try to be a lawyer. Ooh, a lawyer. Somebody can get us out of trouble. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I suppose you can make good money, right? <laughs> well, yeah. yes, they do say that. If you were, if you get to work for a firm, that is. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Laws. Laws. Interesting. Well, there's many places you can uh, go to work uh, as a lawyer, and there's many different things you can do with a law degree so it's 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 a good degree indeed um, yeah. so, especially Leander, so, so when did you oh, I'm sorry. I'm like that kind of journey in the, in the breaking bad I don't want to do that oh man that's the best kind you know Be <laughs> better call Saul <laughs> no, I suppose I will, I will stay away from that. He was worth millions and millions of dollars. He had he had storage spaces with with cash. <laughs> Everything was legal, right? Oh, of course, of course. <laughs> That's really sweet. So, Leandro, so when did you? I'm a little when late. did you? When did you um? Well, not move because you're not moving there permanently. But uh, when did you start your major in Minnesota? Uh, I'm going for a paralegal. Oh, paralegal. When did when did you start that? A paralegal is not part of uh, a normal college program. So, are you? Uh, oh, I think you said you're, it's a junior college right now. Well, actually, uh, it's. I don't know. I don't know in California. It could be the same, but. Uh, so paralegal is actually an associate's degree uh, oh. in my college. Oh, okay, but, uh, yeah. Because I'm going for a community college, only not not really because of price, but mostly because the classes are small, and mm -hmm. as uh, as I don't think that I'm a native uh, speaker, and uh, my writing like, my writing skills are not that great, so going for a community college in a small place and right. having the professor close. I thought that would really help me, and it is really helping. It's, it's Good. very nice, like in a, in a class of 15 people instead of like in a big auditorium. Right. right. I, I thought going to to Hamlin University, it's a private school, but bigger, and or University of Minnesota, that's like way bigger. Right. Uh, right. But I thought that going for a small place would help really help me, and uh, it's very nice. But yeah, apparently it's actually an associate's degree, or you can actually get a certificate. Uh, the difference is that a certificate, at least in Minnesota, you cannot, you cannot switch to to transfer to a university or or a college. Uh, uh, but associate's degree, you can because right. it's like kind of major, like a yeah, yeah. Because, I mean, you would only need two more years of instruction to get a bachelor's, right? Yeah. So then after two years, I'm gonna transfer to uh, Hamlin University. That's a a four-year degree university, mm -hmm. and I'm Where going is that to one? bachelor's degree in legal studies. 
because no, they but have I mean, when you, I'm sorry, but right now you're in Minnesota, but when you switch, you're going to move where again? I'm sorry, what? I mean, you're now doing your associates in Minnesota, but that means that when you're done with those two years, where is it that you go after that? I'm going to uh, Hamlin University. It's a university here in Minneapolis as well. And yeah, it's, it's, he's not going to move. He's, it's just a different uh, institution. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I thought you meant you were going to go to a different state. That, that's what I. Uh, that's what I thought you were saying. But man, I mean, wow. I mean, I'm moving to Michigan later this year. But you know, sometimes I think to myself, man, I'm glad I'm not moving to Minnesota because the winters are are brutal. When especially, well, I mean, all the time, they are. Yeah, well, but you can get used to it, you know, I mean, like anything, I mean, it's it, it's cold, yeah. but, uh, you know, I sometimes I wish I lived in the cold because uh, I never see the snow or anything like that, and I, I like the change of seasons, and when it snows, everything is so beautiful, it's just all white and pure. That's true, that's true. Can, but anyway, can um, what, I, what I'd like to do, folks, is um, ask y'all all... If the, um, anyone has any more questions, because I need to uh, finish up uh, in in a few here. So uh, now's the time to ask a question. Liliana, yes. One. Go ahead, Liliana. The only one. Okay. Uh, I typed it uh, this morning to the chat. Uh, can you see it? Let's see. Oh, yeah. world, yeah. This is the... Yes, it's back to our... Uh, in the middle of the world, of the yeah. world. So I say wo world. It's, it's a little hard to me. How yeah. To pronounce. Yeah. There's like there's different techniques for this word. Th this one is hard. This is one of the most um, uh, yeah, because it, it's a common word. It's a very common word. World, and um, um, people from different countries all over the world. This seems to be, you know, one of the ones that sticks out as. Um, you know, a little uh, challenging, uh, difficult, and things like that. Um, and there's different techniques for this word. Um, so you can break it up into two words. Um, that, that often is kind of a clear way of looking at it. Um, Chris Moore, uh, was he in world? In world, there's a jaw drop? Is that what you're saying, Wasim? Um, so... Yeah, go. When we say the first sounds occurring before the O sounds, uh, it's more really like world. So, uh, uh, like they're more similar to the schwa sound, but it's a bit longer. World or word. Um, I'm kind of doing two things while I'm trying to listen to you. Um, uh, let me just say. Um, a few things like if you break it up, were like W E R E were. Uh, try just saying that, uh, Liliana. Were were. Were were. Yeah. Okay. Pretty good. Pretty good. And then old, um, like O L D. Here, let me just kind of were old. Um, so were old, world. Um, Old, old, you know, uh, that that's one way. W word, uh, well, let's see, Johnny's putting in like word, but then we pronounce it as word. Oh, uh, that is what you're doing. But she's talking about world, um, not word. Whoa. Word, Whoa. see, notice how, like, I hit that R, yes. world. World. What's going on in my mouth? See, this is th this is a good, you know, kind of, you know, really hardcore pronunciation thing going on here because we're hitting that R, you know, were were. So I gotta for this for this pronunciation, I have to hit that R pretty hard. Were old, and then what I do is I pull my lips and my tongue back a bit. Were were, or I go up with it. I should say were old, and I touch the tip of my tongue. For that second syllable, to the my alveolar ridge, old, and I release on D if I want to really get it. Were, and then I go old. Uh, were old. There you go. Okay. Good. Yes. Good. 
So try it again. I'm going to say it first, and then you do it. We're old. We're old. Yeah. Now, world. now, world. there. Yeah, yeah. Quite nice. Quite nice. Now, the, one of the things as you practice that is to really recognize, see in your mind's eye where your mouth is moving. You know, really notice that. We're old because we're we're transitioning into a whole different mouth position. We're old. We're old. A lot of people will say, "Well, old. we're old," and they 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 do too much rounding, too much "o" in the world, you know. But we want to say, "We're old, old, old." Get that? World. There, yeah, yeah. I have a small question. If I have a small question. Yeah, go ahead, Sunita. Okay, Dave. For drastic change on accent, we should go through alphabet. Like vowel has different sound from starting from alphabet, or we should work over oh. word, words or sentence. Yeah, I believe more in a communicative approach, which is using words and sentences. I mean, the alphabet you you can go through, and there's nothing wrong with that. Um, and and as terms of just exercising the mouth, you know, like a, b. C, D, you know, it's a good exercise for the mouth. And um, sure, that could be part of your routine, but we need to mix it up and incorporate some words because uh, that's how we use the language. We use it in words and phrases. And um, sometimes people can make the sounds of the alphabet, but they don't transfer over into the words. And uh, so, if we use it in a more communicative way, uh, then we're, you know, it's it's actual use and it's authentic. And Deb, this is okay. If I don't have R sound, I should mix British and American sound both while I'm speaking in English. That's fine. That's fine. I mean, uh, it, it, the 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 important thing is to be understood. And um, you know, in the West, we we hear a lot of British accents. Um, so uh, as long as it's clear, uh, we're fine with that. It it doesn't have to be perfect. You know, there there are like if I analyzed your speech, Sunita, you know, I might point out some other sounds to work on that are a higher priority than the R sound. Um, so, um, tell me, Dave. Please tell me what kind of sound. Um, well, yeah. I mean, your your th. Tell me that you know, like th that and this and that. You know, your voiced and voiceless. Try to hit that pretty hard. You know, I'm going there, Dave. Um, I like this type of t, th, and then th hit that th pretty hard. Okay. 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 And when you say um, this is a, a, a lot of folks, I think from uh, India, Pakistan, that sort of like very, very, I, I, it's very good. Hit your V sound, you gotta, you gotta hit that harder. So your bottom lip should be under your front teeth. V Victor, mm -hmm. very. Yeah. I, I want to hear because yeah. a lot of folks from your region will say very, very. It's not very in in English, in North American English. It's very. It's it's voiced. It vibrates. So when you say the, and then I feel, feel, your lip is also under your front teeth. It's voiceless and the air is coming out. Feel. I feel very good. I feel very good. There. Nice. See, that can really help. The TH That's and the good. F and V, yeah, will will make a big difference on people understanding you. Okay. okay. Thank you. Yep. Is. <laughs> John, Johnny's got it. He said V, bite your lower lips. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> and Wasim, good. The buzzing sound. That's right. It vibrates. It buzzes. You know, and it's like very. You know, and it's like ooh, I can feel that buzzing. Very. 
Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Thanks, thanks, guys. Um, uh, Thank you, Dave. Yeah, you're welcome. You're very welcome. Any other questions before we no. wrap it up? No, it's time not for not for, not for me. Okay. <laughs> well, um, I, I did want to say hello to Bezo. Bezo, uh, how are you? Bezo is in uh, yeah. is in um, Cairo, Egypt, originally from Burundi. How are you, Bezo? Yeah, I'm fine. That's good. That's how is it funny there? I'm I'm doing well, thank you. I'm doing very well. Everything's good here, and um, uh, you're uh, everything's okay in Cairo. And you're are you studying right now? Yeah, everything's fine at okay. the moment. Okay. Um, um, yeah, I can say so. We st I still studying. Good, good. Nice to uh, nice to hear that and. Thank you for your comment. I, I, I put a post on Facebook on my um, on my uh, on this book I'm reading. That's really fantastic. Not too many people were interested. <laughs> it's a, it's uh, how, next next Sunday we will uh, talk about it. Yeah, we could talk about it some more. But it's uh, it's uh, how how we learn, and it's just. I just personally, I'm not, you know, saying you got to read it or anything, but it's it's just a really interesting on um, on the research, you know, that goes back to the, um, oh God, it goes way back, but there's like uh, 1800s uh, type of research uh, noted all the way up to today, and um, uh, learning methodologies, and you know, sometimes we spend all this time, energy, and money. Going to higher education, you know, but but some schools do this, but I, I most schools don't uh, talk about what's the best way to learn. Like if you go to a, a lecture, well, what's the best way to study that lecture, you know? Um, and uh, there's just some fascinating things about it. And the thing is, like yeah. language learning, if we knew better ways for ourselves to learn something that would make it stay in our brains longer, they call that sticking, and um, w would allow us to maybe um, have a method so we can understand it and have it and put it in our brains maybe in a faster uh, way, well, we would use that, right? But uh, most of us, if we go, it doesn't matter, any school for that matter, they don't say, "Hey, this is how this is a good technique for learning." They just start lecturing, and it's like, "Oh, I'm going to take notes, or I'm going to do this, or I'm going to read the book, and um, and uh, I'm going to try to do well on the exam." And and a lot of times, people will cram on the exam and things like that. Cram? So, What's cram means studying at the last minute. Like, let's say I have an uh, exam tomorrow, I'll stay up like all night long studying. And hoping that I'll do well on the exam tomorrow. Uh, it's, it's not a good idea. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, um, sometimes cramming works for the test, but it doesn't stay in your brain that long. You, you'll forget it in a week, in two weeks, you know, and then it's like you got to start all over again if you're taking a class that builds on it, you know. So interesting stuff. Um, at least I'm enjoying it. And, uh, well, that's about it. So anyway, I want to thank everybody for joining us today. Um, this has been a great call. And uh, we, like I said, we do this most Saturdays at 9 a.m. Pacific time. That's UTC minus 8. And I'm on Facebook at Dave Skanda. I'm on Twitter at Dave Skanda. And Skype, I'm David8811. So I wish you all the best. And um, always remember, uh, it's better just to speak the language and keep trying, even if you fall down and make mistakes. Even if somebody laughs at you, don't worry about the other people because you're building on yourself and you're making your life better and you're making your language skills stronger. And like we talked about, it's a great feeling when you, when you improve your English skills. So just focus on that. And um, and you will progress more and more, and you're going to feel good about it. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you for your help. And Thanks. here we go. Good job.
Okay, now you can say goodbye in your native tongue. You can take off your mute and say goodbye. So goodbye, everybody. See goodbye. You See you later. Goodbye. Ciao. See you. Bye. Bye, Jen. Bye. Uh, adios, amigos. <laughs> bye bye. See you later. Okay, so uh, that was the English meeting call, and uh, I also encourage you to uh, please uh, comment on the video and um, go to my YouTube channel to see my other videos. That's uh, English meeting with Dave Skanda. I'll see you next time, everyone. Bye bye. I'm trying to find a sound effect for this. Uh, uh, there we go. All right. I'll see you next time on the EM call. Bye-bye.